if you sell a slave, now one would say, slavery is banned. I said, yes, it's banned. But slavery was there, and slavery is not something that Muslims should be ashamed of. Because people think that, oh, Islam promotes slavery. Does Islam promote slavery? There is only one means of having slavery, and that is through capturing of prisoners of war. If I go to Burma, where they're very poor, or Somalia, and someone comes to me and says, do you want to buy my son or my daughter? He is seven years of age, nine years of age. I'll sell him for $150. And he can become your slave. That's, that's cheap. I'll buy him. Take two. Says, oh, you get one free. So is this halal? Definitely not. This is a free man, a free child. I cannot buy. The only means of slavery in Islam is through prisoners of wars, non-Muslims, disbelievers. So if someone attacks my country, I, with the army, defend my country, and we get prisoners of wars, what do we do with them? Send them to Guantanamo. No, we enslave them. Oh, this is against human rights. Well, them attacking us is human rights? It's okay, Annie? No, this is human rights. How? He is a slave. He's like an animal being sold and bought and not having rights. Yes, but this is for his sake. Come on. How can it be for his sake? When a surgeon goes to your son and cuts open his stomach to remove a tumor, is this for his sake or not? Definitely, he's bleeding, he's in pain. Yes, but this is for his sake. Likewise, this disbeliever who was an enemy of Islam, I can execute him and get it over with. But what I'm giving him is an honest and decent life. I feed him from what I eat. I clothe him from what I wear, as the Prophet ordered, Not only that, the Prophet, in the Quran and in the Sunnah, whatever you do, Expiation, free a slave. So if I have intercourse with my wife during the month of Ramadan while fasting, this is a sin. It invalidates my fasting. What to do? Free a slave. If I'm driving and I kill someone by mistake, expiation, free a slave. If I tell my wife that I don't want you and I am not even going to touch you, you are exactly like my mother, then I feel remorse and sad, and I would like to continue living with her, free a slave. If I say, Wallahi, I will not come to your school tomorrow, and then I change my mind, expiation, free a slave. And it goes on, everything in Islam, free a slave, free a slave, free a slave. Does Islam promote slavery? Islam promotes freedom for slavery, but by living in our houses and looking at, we, at how we treat them and looking at how we worship Allah Azza wa Jal, this would make them accept Islam voluntary because there is no compulsion in religion. And that is why the Prophet ﷺ said in the authentic hadith, I am astonished, I am amazed of people being dragged to paradise in chains. Who would be dragged in paradise in chains? Everybody goes to paradise willingly. The Prophet is giving us a metaphor. Because these prisoners of war, they were enslaved, so they were in chains. And these chains made them accept Islam and hence enter paradise as if they were dragged into it. So this is not our topic, but you have to clarify things because when people talk to you about Islam and you don't know the beauty of the religion, you will feel inferior, you will feel weak. So yes, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, yes, Islam promote slavery. No, it's not like this. And always turn the tables on their heads. Not physically, but yani, so that they would say, oh, a terrorist, he's putting the tables on their head now. We have wounds, we're dying. Always turn the tables on them by asking them to look into their own books, their own religions, and they'll find slavery being bought, sold, not through jihad, through any means. As long as you can capture someone and sell it, then this is permissible. In Islam, alhamdulillah, it is the greatest religion 
and if you study it, you know why. So, 